Folks, it is awfully good to be with fellow United Methodists. It's nice to look out and see the faces of folks who are concerned about their church and want to see good things happen for this church in the future. I'm honored to be here with you. I'm also reminded of a story that comes from a nearby school where the young students were being given a chance for show and tell. The first little boy comes forward to do show and tell. He's a Jewish young man and he shows the class a menorah. He explains what the menorah means in the Jewish faith. The next little boy comes forward. He's a Roman Catholic. He shows the class his crucifix and he explains the importance of that crucifix. And had you guessed it, the next little one is a United Methodist. And he comes forward just beaming and looking at that group and says all about the, the symbol of the United Methodist Church. And he holds it up, a casserole dish. <laughs> and we all laugh when we hear that because we know what it means. That as United Methodist people tend to come together and eat. For about any reason, we'll tend to come together and eat. And I think that's extremely helpful that we have an attitude of being United Methodists and of taking the time to sit and break bread and learn about each other and just talk and keep on talking. One of my real joys of being United Methodist, and I've been United Methodist all my life, and that has been to, to be a lay speaker in the United Methodist Church because it has afforded me the chance to go into so many churches I did my first speech as a lay person back early in my college days, and I've traveled all the way from around Salisbury down through Charlotte, different places, and I've always learned more about churches. And you see, I get to hear about the, the squabbles and the fights and the, the problems too. And every church has them. Because there are tough issues out there, and I think it's important that we relish the fact that people will hash out their issues in the church. But that's what we're for. The church is here because there are tough issues. And again, we take the attitude as United Methodists that this is an opportunity for us to serve, is to be the place where people can come and, and handle the issues of life. Because we know that that's how God wanted us to work things out was as Christian people, as children of His. And we know that the love of God resides in the church and we're to call upon that love of God and we are to be an example. And make no mistake that right now the world is watching us, not somewhere else, right here. The world is watching us and we know that we can accomplish more for the kingdom of God being united than we ever could being divided. In my law practice of coming on 40 years now, I've been able to handle many, many negotiations. I've been on every side, I've been in the middle, I've seen it all. But one thing I've always found is the number one technique I can use if ever I'm able to get two sides that are at loggerheads to, to get to talking and making progress. When I can get this to work, it's marvelous. I get people to, to back up, step away from the argument, and, and to step back away and find what they have in common. Or what I call better state up, away from the argument, to find areas of high common ground, of morals and ethics upon which they agree, or something where they agree, and then to come together from a perspective of what they have in common. If I can get them to, to view that commonality as their, their basis upon which they talk, I can get so much more done in any kind of negotiation. And that, I believe, is the attitude that we can and ought to take as United Methodists, which we're going to have the attitude of united people, united by far, far more than might ever divide us. Because I think if we'll come to each other out of our shared views and out of our commonality and those things we agree upon so strongly, I think we'll do so much better 
as a people. I want to share with you what well, was it? not such a funny instance when it actually happened to me, but back in 1975, I had just met a wonderful young lady who was also in the graduate program at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And we were out on our first real date. And in other words, we went to some place besides Hardy's. <laughs> and we, we traveled from Chapel Hill to a strange and mysterious land, a, a land of some foreboding, Duke University, <laughs> to a concert by Roberta Flack, probably the finest vocalist that ever sang a song. But the lead-in act that night was Richard Pryor. <laughs> and I had just met this wonderful young lady who was so religious and so conservative and it was just so wonderful and we later got married and, and, and I was trying to crawl up under the chair while this act was going on. It was so profane and over the top and risque. In fact, it was beyond risque. And all of a sudden, Richard Pryor got quiet and he looked out at the crowd. He said, just out of the blue, you know, God doesn't get mad when people love each other. But God can sure get mad when people hurt each other and hate each other. And he went right back to the profanity-laced act. It was the oddest thing that 40 years later almost, I still remember those words of a strange, strange man with a strange act when he said, God doesn't get mad at people when they love each other. Boy, he can sure get mad when they hate each other and hurt each other. You see, I believe that we, the people with me, with the symbol of the casserole dish, ought to be proud of that casserole dish. Because when we meet under the symbol of the cross in fellowship halls all over, that casserole dish is so often present and that means we're going to talk, we're going to break bread together, we're going to pray together, we're going to work together. Because I think if we'll keep the attitude that we are United Methodists, we're going to talk. We're going to work it out. We're going to come at each other from that shared viewpoint of the world that we'll remember we can do so much more united than we ever can for the kingdom of God if we're divided. Again, it's been my pleasure to be with you.